Hey, Emeril Lagasse here. You know we're always trying to bring you the best? Well, we're down here in the village in New York City. The best candy shop, Lilacs. Check this out. You're not going to believe it. Come here. Come here. Look at this. Chocolate-covered Oreos. White and dark. Or milk. These are some that they really, really specialize in. They're cream patties. Check it all out. French rolls, moose rolls, rum rolls, mocha rolls, prawlings. feel like I'm in New Orleans. Chocolate graham crackers. Oh, I think we should go in the back, meet Martha, and hey, let's make our own chocolate. Hey, Martha, how you doing? So good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having Welcome us. Welcome to Lilac. I am so delighted to be here. Well, here's this lady, Martha, with these people that have been working with her are like her family. This is family recipes. These are personal recipes or little twists, little flavors of this, flavoring of that. That's what makes it totally unique. So what are we going to make today? We're going to make raspberry patties today. Ah. You're melting fondant, huh, Ma? Those of you at home that don't know what fondant is, is basically like an icing, a sugar and water icing. Okay, so the next ingredient that goes in there? We use some sacrifice. Okay. Raspberry puree, and then we use the raspberry flavor. Oh, look at that. And that's gonna just start flavoring it and giving it that nice color. A little extract goes in there. That gives it a little more color and that intense flavor. You can smell it from here. Once the flavor is mixed in, it's ready to funnel. Okay, so we have these molds right here. Yes. And then and you we, just... You cover them with little cornstarch so they will break away from the molds once they're done. Uh-huh. The thing that I love about coming to a place like this is I don't think that you should go in life not learning something every day. Yes. So coming into a place like this inspires me. I got to see how to do this. Okay. And it's all about working the stick, huh, Mom? Yes. Oh, boy, that comes out fast. It comes out very fast. Okay. You have to know how much you can raise the stick. Right, let me give it one shot here. You get a fill of the stick. How you're am I doing, doing Martha? All right? You're doing great. This might be my new part-time yeah. job. So, Miss Martha, I know that these are going to sit for about, what, 30, 45 minutes, you yes. said? Yes. And then it's to the finishing room. Right. So now, you got this fascinating machine here. And what you do, you take the patties, you stick them on the chain. Just like that. Can I do one? Yes. This Just is like your that. job. All right. <laughs> that puts the bottom of chocolate on it. It goes down the belt. Then it's going to go under this curtain of chocolate. I wish I was going through the curtain of chocolate. Wouldn't that be fun? Woo! Look at that. That is fascinating. Oh, and I see how it shakes it off like that now, so it's even. Yes, you don't have too much chocolate on it. It's just the right amount. When it gets to the end, it's when the design goes on, so that you know that it's a raspberry patty. And you just take a little chocolate, put an R on it. Where's it going through now? It goes through a cooling tunnel. It's a 20-foot cooling tunnel. Wow. When it comes out, it's dry, and it's ready to eat. So now they're done. Well, here it is, the whole process. Mm. Delicious. I want to thank you so much, Martha. And your whole a, staff, I really appreciate having it. You. Now I know why you guys are the best. Lilacs, what a place. Got the goods? I'm so excited. I think I'm going to go to the studio and make some candies. Boy, we got an incredible show for you tonight. How's everybody feeling? Everybody doing all right? Yeah! Happy, happy. Oh, let me tell you, Emma Lagasse here, and as you can see, just by that little uh, entry right there, that I love candy, and I haven't really met too many people that don't like candy. <laughs> After spending some wonderful, wonderful time at the folks, great folks, over at Lilacs, 
incredible chocolate shop here in New York City down in the village. It inspired me to uh, come back and talk a little bit about uh, some chocolates and the different categories of candies with you guys. So I thought with that inspiration, how about uh, Emerald's Macadamia Nut Chews? Does that sound all right to you? Or maybe you prefer like a big piece of toasted almond and like cherry nougat or something like that. You know. Oh yeah, babe. Well, welcome everybody, because it's Emerald's Candy Store right here on Emerald Live. Give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff. <laughs> if for some uh, reason you fell off another planet or something, you've landed on Emerald Live. And we are live in New York City. <laughs> How you doing, guys? So um, before I uh, kind of... Uh, introduce a very special guest and a, just a wonderful lady. I want to uh, kind of, we always kind of end up over here in the start of the show, kind of talk about different categories, whatever it is, whether it's cheese or sometimes it's meat. Sometimes we don't know what Wendy's going to have. Um, three categories of candies, very, very simple. The biggest category being the top one, top layer over here in our little candy store and that's chocolates. And uh, they come sweet, they come bitter, they come unsweetened, they come stuffed, they're truffles, they're used to cover nuts, they're used to cover Oreos. Beautiful thing. And uh, another category is fruits. Little fruits that are lemon peel, pineapple, all the different fruits and then the other category, the third category, is candies. And uh, that's a big category because in that category, candies, it could be taffy. It could be nuggets, like we have some nuggets right here. It could be caramels. Mazipan falls under that category. You know what mazipan is. Mazipan are those, you know, they make them look like fruits or vegetables and they have different colors and... Okay, well, you get the point where Mozzie Pan is. <laughs> Hard candy, rock candy. There's a lot of wonderful, uh, wonderful things. And I see we also got some wonderful things from uh, Lilacs. I want to uh, give it up for just a couple of minutes to our friend Martha Bond here from Lilacs Chocolate Shop here in New York City. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. Her lovely daughter. These were those patties. These were those patties that you saw on the top of the show that Martha was doing, putting the R for the raspberry. They come peppermint. When I was there, I saw peppermint, huh, to die for. Coffee ones. Yeah, I took two and put them like on my eyeballs <laughs> going out. Unbelievable. And I can't tell you, you know, it's really, really nice to see a family business like this who not only just nice people, but still believe in the old-fashioned way. That can, little conveyor that you, uh, that you saw, that it's really not a conveyor, it's really the process of chocolate, where the bottom was applied first on the screen, then it went down, then it went through this chocolate curtain. Talk about a dream. Could you imagine if you could put yourself through a chocolate curtain? <laughs> well, we won't go there right now. Anyhow, but... <clears throat> It was a really wonderful experience that we had and really, really nice family that works with her and all, of, all the folks there. Fascinating is all I can tell you, fascinating. 
but very tiny, very small. Everything handmade, everything hand dipped still, and hand boxed and gone. And uh, just amazing. I, I'm going to, this is, uh, these folks here are dear friends of mine. I'm going to break one of these open, I hope. <laughs> That's the raspberry one. I don't want to have to tell you that I think I probably made this one, but anyhow. <laughs> fascinating, fascinating process. Martha, um, you know, just before I get started kind of doing my little uh, tribute to you, I'm going to do a little mac macadamia nut and also teach people a little bit not only about chocolate, which is fascinating, but what are some of the, what are some of your favorites? I know what, just by being there and talking with a lot of people, of what people say are their favorites, but what are some of your favorites that, that still remain at, at the store today? Well, one of my favorites is the fudge, which I didn't bring today, but uh, the mousse roll is one of my favorites. It's a very soft light whipped chocolate center and the nut truffle square nut truffle is, square oh my god look at that's this that's the moose roll <laughs> when I broke it I heard you wink from here <laughs> go ahead Miss Martha I'm sorry and this is my uh, one of my favorite and one of our most popular things is the uh, nut, the uh, truffle square which is hazelnut cream and chocolate <laughs> and it's made in a process of three layers Two layers of dark, uh, milk uh, and two, one Are we layer of dark. That? Are we getting that shot? Look at this. It's about a three-day process to make it. Three-day process to make a candy. I mean, it's just amazing. That's the kind of love. That's why, you know, let me tell you, we ended up with Miss Martha because it's a food of love. In this, yes. in this case, it was candy of love. But uh, go ahead, continue. These here? Well, these are French rolls. This is a soft, dark chocolate. Uh, with chopped walnuts and then it's rolled into sprinkles that's another of my favorite and for people who like dark chocolate this is uh, very nice we we sell a ton of these so and growing up with mom was it like were you always in the shop always so were you all, like always you can tell me you, were you sneaking in the back like eating candy all the time well, of course. i know that would be a cool thing yeah. it could be worse you know it could your family could own like a pet store and you'd be in the back with like parakeet seed or something you know what i mean i mean what fun would that be? <laughs> so what's your favorites? Truffles. Truffles. Yes. I saw the case was just unbelievable. All, oh. And the smell. When I went out of there, I got in the car, and I'm like, well, I got to go to the studio now. Got to go to work. And it's like, <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> and then it was like, I am Emerald. <laughs> Coming up next, I'm going to make my macadamia nut chews for Miss Martha. Stick around. We'll be right back. Pockets! to take out the BAM sticks for a couple of minutes. No problem. What do you got, the orange one? Yes. Yeah, Is fantastic. that to die for? Woo. That orange, let me, let me tell you, Miss Martha, I'll tell you, that, shop, oh, man. that shop's been open since like 1923. Really? And, uh, whoa, almost uh, had a, mm. almost had a bad BAM. <laughs> and um, just incredible. I'll bring you over a little, uh, little snack here in a little bit, Doc. Great. Have a piece, man. One of these particular here, you and Cliff. Which one are you eating, Cliff? The orange one, too? Mm. Check that out. It's a little cluster. That's kind of the mm. direction that we're going right now. All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, Candies. We have Martha Bond uh, from Lilac's Chocolates here in New York City. Incredible. And now, uh, in her honor, I'm going to make her a little version of mine. I'm going to start with some sugar in a sauce pot and also some brown sugar. See, she can totally relate to that because she may be in business in New York for a long time, but I know that she's a southern lady at heart because she's from Mississippi. <laughs> right, honey? Right. <laughs> a little corn syrup. A 
and a little bit of vanilla. Some butter. Oh, I can't fool around. It's a candy show. A little bit of cream. You can see that butter fat that I had in the top of that as well. Now, what I'm doing here, folks, is a little chew. And basically, when you're working with a lot of candies in that category that we talked about, this category right here particularly, you start working with a lot of stages, temperature stages that are very, very important as I'm doing this candy right here. We want to make sure that the sugar and the butter and the cream is getting dissolved. A lot of you folks at home with these ingredients may think we're making a proline. It's kind of a little bit like the same, or a little nugget, if you will, or a caramel, for that matter. Now, the idea is not to just crank up the heat and blast it. I'm going to take these macadamia nuts, put those inside of a little roasting pan, and I want to roast them. What you're looking for when you're roasting them, see the difference here, Houston? Can we see this? I've had these in here for about 12 minutes. You see when before I put the macadamia nuts in? They're kind of very blonde, and they taste good. But when you roast them, when you're roasting nuts, you see you got all of that oil that's coming out, all of that flavor. That's exactly what we want to do. We're trying to bring out that flavor of those macadamia nuts. Now, getting back to what I was saying, candies. This timer, looking for about five minutes. Reason for that is when you're making candies, look, there's no fooling around. It's really, uh, you're dealing with a lot of temperatures, as I, as I said. And how do, you, uh, how do you gauge that? Well, if you're inexperienced, and I've been making candy for a long time, and I'm still inexperienced. You need to get a candy thermometer, whether it's a short one, one like this. These are preferred because you can clip it onto your pot. Because let me tell you, when you start working with some of these candies at some of these temperatures, you get some of the sugar on you, you're going to be burned. You've got to be very careful. This is another type candy th thermometer. Has a little clip in the back. Some of these give you the stages right on the thermometer whether they're round like this or whether they're square. And you want a candy thermometer. It's very important because that stands to high heat. Why? 230 degrees is a thread stage. Maybe it doesn't mean anything to you right now, but it means a lot to somebody who's making a particular candy who's looking for the thread stage, 230 degrees. 240 degrees is a softball stage, and that's only uh, 10 degrees more but the sugar is completely, completely different. The other thing is a firm stage or a firm ball stage. That's 244 to 248. I know I'm boring you with this stuff. Hard ball stage. <laughs> then there's a soft crack stage and a hard crack stage. That hard crack stage being at 300 degrees. That's where a lot of these hard candies, that's where a lot of these hard candies, they get up to those temperatures because the sugar begins to start crystallizing, just as it's what it's doing right now. You see? One other trick. We're looking to take this at about 248, 47 degrees for this macadamia nut chew. So look, we're going to cook this down. you got to be patient with it. One little trick that you can do is get a pastry brush with some water. Get a little pastry brush like this with a little bit of water, cold water. When you're doing sugar like this, when you start getting sugar caught on the sides, it's a good thing to start brushing it because the water will actually knock it back off the sides and help it go in right back inside. Some of these sugar dishes, you don't want to be stirring too much. You want to cook it. I'm going to lower this heat real quick. I'm going to start getting my temperature gauge on this particular sugar right here. And this would be a good time for you to go get something sugary, because when we come back, I'm going to show you my little tribute to Miss Martha. Stick around. We'll be right back. All right, Doc.
Welcome back, Emerald Lagasse here tonight. We're in Emerald's Candy Store, thanks to Miss Martha Bond, Doc Gibbs, and Cliff, everybody. So as you can see, I've got not only my macadamia nuts cool now, I've got a little foil, homemade style here, buttered, my macadamia nuts spread. The sugar. I'm going to check my thermometer. And uh, Buck, if you can uh, get a shot on that, hopefully close. Can you get it right there, Buck? Beautiful. We are at uh, 250, about 250 right now. And we want to be in that hardball stage of 250 to 265. So we're going to, uh, we'll let it just go just another second. One of the things also is when you have candies, you need to dip them in things, preferably chocolate, as you can see these right here. Many types of chocolate. There are unsweetened, bittersweet, semi-sweet, milk chocolate, dark chocolate. You go into lilacs, and you'll have various combinations, including which I was really impressed, by the way, of the sugar-free candies that you had. I thought that was really cool. And uh, you have to temper the chocolate. So first of all, in order to do that, you have to melt it. So I've got some little bit of dark chocolate here that I'm melting over a double boiler. That's what this thing is here, see? My own homemade double boiler. And I got some milk chocolate over here. And first, what I'm doing is I'm melting them. So they're from the hard stage into the melting stage. I'm going to stop there for a minute. Check out our temperature. We are just about in the stretch. Be very, very careful, folks. We're at about 254 degrees right here. Beside the thermometers, wooden, wooden sticks really help out a lot in candy making, as well as a good little timer, because certain candies, instead of by temperature, will give you, give you time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to pour this mixture right over those macadamia nuts like that. And I'm going to begin to let that... It's alive! <laughs> going to let that just kind of sit, relax. It's going to start cooling down. Now, back over to chocolate land for a minute. Now the chocolate is melted. I had a great little email from a friend in Brooklyn, Dan the man, the candy man, he knows who he is, was wondering about a tempering machine and how you can buy these tempering machines. If you go in Miss Martha's shop, she's got all kinds of machines, tempering chocolate, circulating the chocolate back, but at home, you don't have that. So Dan the man, this one's for you. What you do is you, after you melt the chocolate, you just put it in an ice bath like this, and we kind of stir this a little bit. You're going to see what's going to happen. And now, just like what you told me with the machine, took it down to about 87 oh, degrees. Right. That's exactly what this is doing. It's getting to be at the right temperature so that we can actually dip the chocolate that we're going to make. So this is good and tempered. So now, not only do we have melted chocolate, but now this chocolate is tempered so that we can basically begin to dip our chocolates. We're going to take the milk chocolate one, ice bath. You want to have it anywhere between about 85 and 90, 92 degrees is the temperature for the chocolate to be tempered the right temperature so that when you dip the chocolates, they stick, they harden the proper way. Sorry, it's time for my break.
That means my candy's ready. See? <laughs> I had to put a secret code in there. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, but all those late night shows, they're trying to steal this thing, you know? <laughs> now, after that candy rests, it gets into that stage. What you do is peel back that foil. And then you got like this brittle. Then you can cut it however you want. I'm just going to use a basic knife. Watch this. Sharp knife. And I'm going to make a long strip like this. And then I'm going to make some squares, about so big. <laughs> Jay, everything all right up there? You got to watch out for Jay every now and then. Now, let me show you, folks. This is sort of my home way, homemade way. I take a little skewer when that chocolate is the right temperature. And then maybe I want this one in milk chocolate. See? Now you can do a couple of things. You can just kind of lay it and stand it down like this. You can take the skewer out. Then you can go back and just sort of... The other thing, you take some dark chocolate like this, temper it in that one. Just to the right consistency. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to temper and I'm going to dip a bunch of this macadamia nut surprise for my friend Miss Martha. And then I'm going to show you an incredible nugget candy with almonds and dried cherries. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dr. Gibbs. Dr. Gibbs. Doc Gibbs, everybody, and Cliff. Now, if you're just joining us, we had tempered some chocolate. We melted it, then tempered some chocolate. And we began to start dipping some of our chocolate. That's the difference between dipping it and just drizzling on it. You submerge it in there. Let me show you something else. Hopefully you can see these. Doesn't mean that it's bad. You see these chocolates right here? How they're kind of like, kind of really dull looking? Doesn't mean that they're bad. It's really because there's no sheen in this chocolate because it really hadn't been te tempered properly. One of the ways that you can do that, because you see chocolate has a lot of cocoa butter in it. And one of the things that you can do to prevent that so that you have a nice sheen is to add a little bit of flavored oil. Martha and I were talking about this incredible peppermint oil that she uses. It's very rare to get. And I don't mean like all of this like artificial junk stuff. Really, really good stuff. This is a sweet almond oil that I have right here. And you can find them. And uh, they really make a big difference. And one of the things that I really, really appreciated when I was at Lilac's candy store was how 
you know, sometimes you get a bunch of candies and they, they pretty much all taste the same. You know, they melted whatever kind of chocolate, they made whatever fillings, they dipped them, it's pretty much a taste all the same. But the uniqueness of these, this lady's chocolates is because of the different flavors, the little different touches here and there added, mixed, blended, just like a great guy or gal who makes wine or just like, you know, somebody who blends tea. There's an art to it. And this little oil right here I'm going to add, you're going to see, you just a little bit. You add a little bit of that because they're very, very powerful. And you'll get this incredible sheen. You see the difference already on that? You'll get this incredible sheen with your chocolates. Even if you're not using this kind of chocolate right now for a candy, you still have to temper chocolate to have a chocolate frosting. You still have to uh, temper chocolate to have a chocolate ganache on a cake. Why do you want it to look very dull? With just a little touch like that, these little techniques, it can be brilliantly shiny. You can see the difference here in the shininess of the chocolate? Hopefully you can see that at home. Hopefully you haven't had too many of them. <laughs> and if you did, God bless you, my brother, let me tell you. Now, here we go again. We got the candy. You cut it in the size that you want. Maybe you want them smaller. Maybe you want them bigger. And then you just temper it. You dip them. This is another way that you can, that you can do it. Now, one of the best ways, particularly that I also saw at Lilacs, was you can have little racks. Very smart, actually. You can get these little racks like this that you can actually set the chocolate on because then the excess chocolate that drips, you can also scrape that later on when you're done with a spatula because this is not bad. You can reuse this. So I'm going to show you... Uh, one again now in the dark chocolate. We'll use this one right here. This is, this is a little chocolate dipping music by Doc Gibbs. Doc, do you have a favorite uh, candy? Uh, I like that brittle. This brittle here that I'm working yeah, on? Yeah. This is pretty Macadamia good stuff. Nut brittle. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty good stuff, Don. Oh. Boo boo. <laughs> this is one prior that um just just get take a little whack out of that. This one prior, because I'm I'm trying to build this up for Miss Martha right now. Is oh, that amazing? Man. Blow your mind. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some that we had dipped earlier. I certainly don't expect you to eat all of these. You have those too. So Thank you. I left them plain milk chocolate, a little dark chocolate. Thank you. You and your daughter, just as uh, you were hospitable to us. Have you guys tried one of the nuggets yet? Oh, Try one of those and... Uh, Make some friends. That's all it is, folks, right there, about tempering it. I know we kind of went on and on and on, but it's very important, no matter what you're going to, uh, even if you're going to dip Oreos, it's important to know about the tempering of the, uh, of the chocolate. Now, this next incredible is a little nougatine or nougat with cherries but it's also very important as we want to bring this up to a hard crack. Here's how we start. In a little sauce pot. We're going to add sugar. A pinch of salt. We're going to add some corn syrup. I think they're starting to get whacked out on these candies. 
You go for it. <laughs> Tiny little bit of water. And then what I want to do is I want to dissolve with that corn syrup the sugar. And you can see that I've got this candy thermometer here. We want to take this up to about 300 degrees. When it starts to do that, here's one that we started earlier. This one's at about 275. There's a little simple trick that you can do to, um, beside what I showed you with the pastry brush, when the, when the sugar starts coming up, there's another thing that you can do to check and see if it's getting at a stage, and that is by getting yourself a little bit of ice water like this. This is what I do when I make pralines. And um, what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of the mixture on a spoon like this, and I'll just kind of do a little drip like that inside of some ice water. And the reason for that is, is that, let's see if you can see this, I hope you can. When it cools a little bit, you're going to get like a little piece of the candy that's inside of the ice water. But as you can see here, it's very soft. If this was at the right temperature, it would have hardened into a little crystal, into a little ball. So when we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this incredible nugget. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. Everybody feeling sweet, having a good time? All right. Hang on to your hats, you at home right there. Don't even think about touching that surfer durfer there. 250 degrees, my little sugar mixture's gone up to now. Be very careful. Just like you make an Italian meringue. The egg white is stiff right now. And what we're gonna do on the side of the bowl, we're gonna slowly add about a third of that mixture to this. Then, we're going to put this back on because now we want to take this up to about, that was at 250. We want to take it up to about 300 right now. You can see how this is starting to be really shiny, just like an Italian meringue is. All the candies. feeling so good right now. Now, once this comes to 300 degrees as it is right now, what you're going to do is add the rest of this. Going to add the rest of this in here. You're going to see how it's going to get super thick. I've broken a few mixes like this. Then, a little butter at a time. It's kind of like making divinity. Guess you gotta be in the South for that. Right. Right. Little butter like that. We're gonna add our almonds. We're gonna add our dried cherries. Little butter at a time. <laughs> now, when all of that's incorporated, you get a little mixture like this, a little uh, glass, little Pyrex. Look at, look at the consistency of this. Can you see that? What we're going to do, you see that right there? You're going to pour this mixture 
okay? You're going to pour this mixture right into a buttered dish, and you're just going to let it sit for a couple of hours and cool down. And then, after it cools, <laughs> oh, it's sticky. It's like marshmallow. That's why. Just like divinity. When it cools like this, we'll take it right out of here. See? And we got this nugget. And now you can cut it any way that you want into little pieces, long pieces. Look at that. Or some folks, what they do, what they'll do, some folks, is they'll just stretch it and pull it and make shapes out of it. Unbelievable. I want to thank Martha Bond, Lilac Chocolate Shop in Manhattan here. Yeah, baby. I'm Emeril Ladansi. See you tomorrow, everybody.